Before I start, I would like to say one thing that uh, time management is what separates successful people from the unsuccessful ones. And if you think that you don't have the time to watch this video or at the end of the video, you're not going to implement what I'm going to teach you, then what I suggest is that you should go back to watching entertainment videos or whatever you were doing before coming across this lecture. Because my videos are meant only for those who are trying to change their life, be it improving your career at job or becoming successful entrepreneur. My aim is to help you realize that dream. So if you have still decided to stay, then I can promise you one thing, that by the end of the video, you will see a new you. And if you implement what I'm going to teach you, then I can promise you will see change in yourself and in your life from day one. So let's get started. Time management is something you might have heard or read about before and still you are not able to implement it in your life only because that the way it was presented to you by many authors or entrepreneurs was in a complicated way, which is why most of us are not able to utilize the techniques taught. I'm going to teach you an easy three-step method that I personally use and so far I have been successful in sticking to it and honestly, I think that is what made me successful. For those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Shah and I live in Afghanistan and I'm a speaker and entrepreneur. I have worked as an employee too uh, for 14 years uh, for big international organizations as CFO, CEO and other fancy titles. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is not to brag. I'm no one, but I'm sharing this with you so you could come out of the mindset thinking that you can't do it. You should know that if I can become successful while living in a country at war, then you can definitely do it too. Now let's get back to the three step method for time management. Uh, the three steps of time management are actually three questions. And the first question is how to identify what to do. It is a fundamental question to ask because if you want to manage our time properly, then it is extremely important to know what we are planning to do because time is limited and we can't do everything. And of course, then the second question will be how to do it. So once we have identified what are the tasks or goals that we want to achieve, then the next question would be to come up with a method on how to do them. And the last question would be why to keep on doing it. One thing that has always failed us in getting anything done is the battle fatigue. It is that question that arises in our mind after following a particular routine for some time that why am I doing it? And it is extremely important to know why you do what you do, be it the job that you do every day or even your religion. You should know why you do what you do. If you ask me why time management is important, then the answer will be because it is the most scarce resource and there is no way yet to buy it. The amount of time that you have and the amount of time that billionaires have is the same. So it always boils down to what you do with your time as that is what decides your success rate. So let's talk about the first stage, how to identify what to do. I think the whole purpose of doing time management is to do things right. But before we could do things right, we should know what are those things or tasks that we must do rather than should do to become successful and achieve that goal, that dream that we have in our mind. So when you are setting your goals, you should be number one, very clear about your goals. What does it mean to be clear about your goals or why does it even matter? Can't we just do random stuff and still become successful, like doing things as they come? And the answer to it is no. It is extremely important to know what your goals are and only then you can expect a clear outcome. Let me give you an example. Uh, one day you get out of your home and you take a taxi and when you sit in the taxi, the driver asks you, where do you want to go? You say anywhere. And the driver drops you at some random location and you're not happy about that place. Next day you decide to take a bus and the other next day you decide to take a train and this continues for a while and you start getting frustrated with it. And not just frustrated, you are actually angry and upset because you are not reaching anywhere. This is happening to you because when you get out of home and you don't know where you want to go, then it doesn't matter if you take a cab or a flight, still you won't reach anywhere because it is not the problem with a cab or the plane. The problem is with you not identifying where you want to go. So for instance, if we were clear that you wanted to visit your aunt's home, then it wouldn't matter if you go there by bicycle or even walk to that place, which can be miles away, but still you will reach there and you will be happy because you will end up in the place where you want it to be. So it is very important to have clear goals in mind. You can't just dwell around thinking that right things will happen to you. They will not. This is life and life doesn't work that way. Number two, write everything down. Have your goals as well as your daily tasks written on a paper. 
This is a major difference between those who achieve and those who fail. Even though both might have same education and skills and resources, but if one is only thinking in their head and the other one is writing things down on paper, then the one who writes his or her goals will definitely have an edge and will succeed because writing things down makes it easy for us to make sense out of it. As in which order the person should do things or even if they want to break down their task into smaller activities, then if it is on paper, you can see the holistic picture, which makes things easier. As Stephen Covey has said, if the letter is not leaning against the right wall, then every step we take just takes us to the wrong place faster. If you don't write down your goals, then it is not possible for you to know where you are heading and don't limit writing things just to your goals. Even if you have an important meeting with someone, then make sure you are taking notes of it. And it doesn't need to be an official meeting for you to take notes. It can be a discussion between you and your kids or your friends. It is really important to write it down as what you said and what they said. So later on, when you have another meeting in this regard, then you can go back to your notes and see what was discussed last time. And where are you now compared to what you both agreed? And, and then you can decide where to go from here. I recommend to take notes even when you are listening to this video because taking notes is extremely important. So I suggest you grab a paper and pen and start writing down. Number three, don't major in minor things. When you're writing down your daily tasks to achieve your goals, the important question is not to ask what to do, but what not to do. As in today's world, learning what not to do is a necessity as there are so many things to keep us busy for no good reason. Be it scrolling through YouTube videos or Facebook or listening to something that doesn't make a difference in your life, I'm not against social networks. Social networks have their benefits, but it should never be at the cost of your productivity. Social networks should not be the reason for your failure. Based on broadbandsearch.net, an average person spends 144 minutes on social networks daily. Imagine if you would spend that amount of time on learning a new skill that can give you a better life. Various studies have shown that if you could spend one hour daily in a particular area, then in three years time, you will be a national level expert in that particular thing. I mean, wow. Make this a habit that whenever you start doing something, always ask yourself, is this activity going to make my life better? Or is this just a waste of my time? Always follow the 80-20 rule, which can save you tons of time. Don't do 80% of things that are useless or don't matter much, but do the 20% things that will make an actual difference in your life. Don't fall for the temptation of doing easy parts first. Always do the hard things first at the start of your day because this will keep you motivated for the rest of the day. Now, as we have identified what to do, let's talk about our second step as how to do it. Number one, change bad habits. It is good to know that getting out of bad habits means first learning how to get good habits and then doing these habits over and over again until they become natural. It is not going to be easy because we are too used to uh, our bad habits, which are actually destroying our life. And as we spoke earlier, social media over usage is harmful for the productivity. So we should learn how not to be slaves of technology. The technology was developed to help us and not to destroy us. And the best solution that I have found for staying away from social media is through few features and apps on our mobile phones. Like Samsung has an option called Focus, which basically turns your phone into a basic phone and except for phone calls and messages, you can't do much. Similarly, there's a feature like this on iPhone too. But in case if your phone doesn't have a feature like this, it's okay. There are so many apps on uh, Play Store and App Store that you can install, which will help you stay away from your phone. Because if you say, no, I have self-control, Believe me, social media is like drugs. You want to quit, but you will not be able to until you have an external support. And this app or feature is exactly the external support you need. Whenever you are doing something important, be it listening to a lecture or you're writing something, then while you are doing it, in between, you'll feel the urge to grab the phone and spend a minute or two on Facebook or on Instagram. And we know once you get there, it is never one or two minutes. I think saying one or two hours will be more realistic. But if you have an app or feature which stops you from opening social media, so you grab your phone and try to open something, you'll realize that app has locked it away and your mind will calm down a little knowing why did you install that app in the first place. And you'll be able to get back to what you were doing. Number two, plan your day in advance. I like to plan my upcoming day at night and believe me, 
it only takes 5 to 10 minutes. And as we already spoke, the best way is to write. I'm a Samsung Note user, so for me it is easy. I just have to take out my S Pen and start making my to-do list right there on my phone. There are never more than 10 things because I only write down the most important things. The things that will actually make difference in my life and will bring me one step closer to my dreams. If you don't have a note like me, then you can always install various apps such as Evernote or any other app that suits your taste. I always recommend downloading few apps and by testing and trying, you can find out which one suits best to your needs. Believe me, there is nothing exciting than taking off things from your to-do list. It makes you high as if you are on drugs. Your mind will release dopamine, a hormone that is responsible for your happiness. Every time you take off something from your list, your mind will release dopamine at that instance, which will make you feel good and happy about yourself and your life. It will make you feel high and you will never turn back to drugs once you tasted the pleasure of success. Number three, how to use your phone. I'm not against smartphones or social networks. All that I'm saying is that make a habit of not using your phone when you wake up and when you're going to sleep because these are the two most important parts of your day and you don't want to start or end your day in a bad way and social media can easily poison your mornings or evenings. I personally put my phone on flight mode 30 minutes before I plan to sleep and don't turn it off in the morning until I have started my day. I start my day by thanking God for this life and everything that I have and listening to something good. It can be a motivational video or something else. I mean, something that will make me happy. Some people might say, no, I can't put my phone on flight mode. What if there is something urgent? Then my answer will be that the person calling might have other people to call as well and not just you. And you don't want to live a continuous bad life because of that one call that you may or may not ever receive. Number four, don't create deadlines. I'm not totally against deadlines, but I think it does more harm than good as it creates a false perception in our mind and unnecessary stress. We think that if we have deadlines for what we want to get done with, then maybe we will be able to get it done because of all panic and stress that a deadline creates. But it's not true. If it were true, then all New Year resolutions would have worked out for people. And I'm sure you have already made so many deadlines and promised yourself that you will achieve them, but still you have failed. Why? Because deadlines end up creating stress and when you are stressed, that is the time when your mind decides to procrastinate on things and you end up making a lot of excuses. And those excuses are usually like, I'm not feeling well or I'm not able to achieve this. I mean, you can come up with any kind of excuse just to get out of it. Better than deadlines are timelines. They both sound same but are a little different. Decide on how much time will it take for you to do something and then add some extra time on top of it and then start working on it not because there is a deadline that you have to achieve, start working on it because that is something that will be on your to-do list. You will continue to do things without stress of deadline and you will enjoy completing them by ticking off that box every day. And in case if you fall behind, you will again see that thing on your list next day. And if you see that one thing pending again and again, multiple days in a row on your list, then one day you will get frustrated and tired of seeing it on your list and you will finally end up doing it because you would love to tick off that one annoying pending task. Number five, everyone procrastinate. You will not believe it, but even the most successful people procrastinate on things and they are extremely lazy about them. But the difference is that smart people procrastinate on small things that are not so important and the foolish procrastinates on important things. If you have seen successful people, you would have noticed that they are not so keen or excited about things to do at home such as repairing their broken window or fridge or buying groceries, but they work their ass off when it comes to things that have direct impact on their success and their life. And of course, foolish people are the opposite. They will rather lay down and watch season after season on Netflix but wouldn't bother watching just an hour of lecture that can help them earn a better life. Number six, learn to say no. It is extremely important that if you want to have a better life where you are not stressed for no good reason, then you need to learn to say no to things that are useless or will consume your time for no reason. I am a very positive person and believe in the power of yes, but you should be smart enough to understand the fact that you shouldn't be going around and saying yes to everything. There are things that you should say no to. And how to identify them? Well, whenever an opportunity comes around or someone tells you something, then ask yourself, how is this going to make my life or health better? How is this going to bring me closer to becoming successful and getting all that I want? 
and I'm sure after you answer that question you will know whether to say yes or no to that opportunity or person. Number seven, discipline yourself. When you work, then just work and don't chit chat as that is what consumes your work time and work time is very important because if you don't respect your work time and don't use it properly you will end up falling behind on your goals and targets and then you will try to work long hours to compensate for it but guess what work is like sleep you can't sleep for four hours one day and then sleep for 12 hours next day to make an average of eight hours if you miss sleep you have destroyed your immunity and you will have an unproductive day. Similarly, missing work is a serious loss and if you're losing it for something, then it must be important than you becoming healthier and wiser. If you're well disciplined, then it is close to impossible for you to work long hours throughout your life. As you would know what is important to do first and what to leave and also you will be in control of your time and your life, which as a result will liberate you to do whatever you want in life and on your terms and not on life terms or someone else's terms. Number eight, stay organized and comfortable. When you're working, make sure that the area is clean and comfortable so nothing is bothering you continuously and you are able to work for as long as you want because if it is uncomfortable, then working under painful conditions will make you less productive and the quality of work that you will produce will not be good either because under continuous stress and discomfort, even diamonds can break and we are mere humans. Number nine, keep your phone calls in check. When you receive a phone call, always try to be polite by saying your hi and hello. And after that, immediately reach to the point by asking, how may I help you? And do the same even if you call someone, keep the same behavior and ask them straight away. This is why I'm calling you. You don't want to talk for half an hour or an hour only to find out that for the reason you both are communicating is not going to work out. And you have wasted your time on a wrong person or a wrong phone call. I'm not promoting a degrading social behavior, but it is necessary for you to understand that important calls should be separated from the social calls. If you're calling someone for fun, then fine. Go ahead and chit chat for hours. If you're making important calls that can help you get your targets done, then it is not smart to make long calls. Number 10, take one step at a time. What I mean is that for a minute, Imagine tomorrow you have to climb Mount Everest. Now you can see that it sounds scary because it is 8,800 meters high. But if you think of it as one step at a time, that it wouldn't scare you so much. Always break down your big tasks or goals into small ones, as they will save you from getting frightened, which in result will make you procrastinate. It doesn't matter what the goal is, whether it is to learn how to make money through forex trading, or if it is about losing weight, it is very important to break it down. I was born with a lot of body disorders and by the age of 29, I had been operated around 9 times. In most of my surgeries, I have gained an extra weight of 20 to 30 pounds because of overeating. But after my recovery, I have always lost it back in 6 to 12 months. And not through some strict exercise or diet plans, but small things. Losing weight is extremely simple. If you just take one small step at a time, you can get it done. Similarly, becoming successful and achieving the goal, the dream that you have in mind is simple. Just doing it every day, every hour, one small step at a time. Number 11, action versus planning. As important as planning is, it is still good to remember that in battle between action and planning, action always wins. And the reason for it is simple because we can plan to write an amazing book. But if we don't write it, if we don't publish it, then what is the value of planning? Nothing. Always plan, but remember that it is a must to take action. Planning is like having orange seeds in your hands, but if you don't take the action to put those seeds in the ground, you will never see an orange tree. Number 12. Speed is not always important. There's a quotation that I really like from Gandhi that says, there is more to life than just increasing speed. And it is true. We need to learn to unsubscribe from all those emails, channels and stuff that are adding no value to our life. I remember when I was working as chief operations for United Nations, whenever I would go on vacation and come back, I would find more than 500 emails in my inbox in just a week's time. And in early days at my job, after my return from vacation, I would invest my next week reading through all the emails and searching for what is actually pending and whatnot. But later on with the passage of time, I found two good solutions to this problem. First solution was to delete all emails. And it would sound funny, but this was actually the solution. Because if it is important, they will send it again as a gentle reminder. 
And the second solution was to delete every email without reading it if it doesn't say Dear Shah, basically not calling out my name. So I would know if it's not saying Dear Shah, then it is not addressed to me. So I can delete it without opening it. I'm sure you have so many things in life that don't add value and are just eating your time, but you continue with it to show that you have the speed and energy to deal with it. I think you don't need to be speedy. You just need to be effective and efficient. Quality versus quantity. Do one thing instead of 10, but do only the most important thing. And not with speed, but give it its proper required time. And the last one, number 13, buy time. Well, I know I have said it earlier that we can't buy time, but that is not completely true. We can buy time, not ours, but we can buy other people's time and then add their time to our time in order to increase our time. <laughs> Doesn't it sound funny? Well, it is fun for real. You just need to identify the activities that are not important and you're only doing them because someone else is not doing them for you. So what I suggest is to hire someone to do them. For instance, usually cooking, cleaning and stuff like that take away a lot of our daily time. If you can afford, then hire someone to cook and clean for you. Or if we talk about office life and you are a micromanager, then try to change your attitude and learn to delegate. Because that is the best solution to be more productive by delegating those activities that either you can't do very well or they are not very important for your success. Some people might say that I can't afford to pay someone else. I don't make much money. Well, you can do basic math and find out. If the person you hired to do that extra annoying activity for you charges you only $20 an hour and what you make is $50 an hour, then I'm sorry to say you're plain stupid because by doing that activity yourself, you're losing $30 an hour. If you free your time, then maybe you can make an extra $50 or $100 an hour. But as you are trying to save money by working yourself on everything, you're actually losing it. And there is a possibility you're actually broke and living hand to mouth. And still what you can do is to find better solutions. For example, if cooking is a problem, then what you can do is watch some videos on YouTube and learn how to cook meals for a week instead of cooking food every day. This way you can still free up your six days in a week. So if you could just think out of the box, I'm sure you can find better solutions as how you can free your time and slowly you will learn how to increase your time by actually buying it. And now we have reached towards our last question, which is to why keep on doing it? An answer to it is not simple because after doing it for a while, you will get tired of it. You'll get sick of the routine and you'll start questioning the method as why keep on doing it. And at that time, it is very important to keep these things in mind. Number one, success is in routine. Like everything else in the world, success also can be tracked, analyzed and predicted. And the easiest way to do is to follow those who have been successful and then just try to copy them. If you want to add your own flavor to it, that is fine too. But you need to learn the ground rules properly. And one major ground rule is that successful people always follow routines. Always. They are always following a discipline. Be it a person who has six-pack abs or a sprinter who holds a world record, you'll see that they follow the routine irrespective of how they feel or how the weather is. So if you want to become successful, then you need to stick to your routine your entire life. Number two, reaping is reserved for those who plan. Again, you can take all the courses of the world and meet all amazing mentors around the globe. But if you don't take action, then everything you have learned is useless. So you need to keep on doing it. As they say, if you keep on knocking doors, you will find open doors. So learn to keep on doing it even if you continuously fail, still continue to do it because very soon you will see a breakthrough and that is all you need. Number three, time management is life management. If you don't manage your life, then your life will manage you. Either you are in control of your life or your life is in control of you. It's that simple. And believe me, you don't want life to be in control of you because that is what we see in poor countries and with poor people who don't know from where their next meal will come because their upbringing is never in a way to tell them that they can change their circumstances. So if you don't want to have a bad life where every bad thing is happening to you, then you need to continue with time management as this one tool is mother of all tools. It doesn't matter how many skills you have or how rich or poor you are. If you don't know how to manage your day-to-day -day time, if you don't know how to manage your day-to-day -day relationships, your day-to-day -day work, then I can promise you that you will never see even a glimpse of success and you will just die with the wish. Number four, get rid of bad relationships. I'm not talking about your boyfriend or girlfriend or your spouse. I'm talking about all kind of relationships you have. 
be it with humans or animals, you need to learn how to become happy. Because if you're not happy, then it is close to impossible for you to become successful. Because success and happiness goes hand in hand. And you can never be happy or successful if you're continuously in a relationship that is poisoning your life. Stop hanging out with them, even if they are family or childhood friend. By now, you should have realized how hard it is to change your life. Then imagine how hard it is to change that poisonous person. I firmly believe that even if it is your spouse or your parents, then still you need to either get divorced or find a way not to hang out with them a lot. Bad relationships are energy drainers. And it doesn't matter if you plan your day daily and you follow all that I have taught you. But if you still have them in your life, they'll continue to demotivate you. They'll continue to poison your life and it will be like carrying around a mountain on your shoulders. And sooner or later, you will give up and you'll get back to that awful life that you were trying to quit in the first place. Number five, optimism is essential for success. It is extremely important to be optimistic. If you want to change your life or your behavior, or if you are trying to get out of those bad habits, you need to be optimistic. Don't look at problems of life as if they are there to obstruct you, but look at them as if they are there to instruct you, to guide you, as how to achieve that goal. Always stay motivated and remember motivation doesn't work by listening to motivation one time and you are done for the rest of your life. Zig Ziglar explained it very well. He says, motivation is like taking shower. You gotta take it every day. So always stay optimistic, stay motivated because becoming negative in this life will not take you anywhere. You'll just die sitting on your couch complaining about things in life and how life is unfair and you don't want to be that person. Number six goal versus process how to stay continuously happy during your journey towards your goal well one thing that we need to learn is the fact that we shouldn't expect to be happy only when we achieve our goal rather enjoy the process of reaching towards our goal because when you actually achieve that goal it might not make you that happy as you had imagined let me share a story from my life with you there have been many instances in my life where i have achieved all that i had imagined and when it happened the happiness didn't last that long but what really kept me happy and moving was actually the daily grind and the process of going towards that goal i'm talking about those little successes that we get while we are walking towards our dream that is actually the real source of happiness and that is what human wants when i was in school all i ever wanted was to appear on national tv even if it was for a few seconds and later on in life, when I created Avanesan's first online store, many global news channels came to me for interviews such as Al Jazeera, China Central Television, Voice of America, radios such as BBC, business magazines, and many other gave me exposure that was way more than what I wanted as a kid. But believe me, I didn't feel much. I wasn't overly happy or excited. I was happy but only momentarily. Because my real happiness was in the journey towards that goal of making Afghanistan a digital country. It was something that brought me greater happiness and even today when I look back, it still makes me happy. Very happy thinking how Afghanistan is evolving irrespective of all this war going on. So always keep in mind, it's the process that gives you happiness and not the goal or reaching your goal. Number 7. Time is money. I'm sure you have heard this one a lot and I did it too, but you know like every other phrase we actually don't get the real meaning of it. Time is actually your capital because if you invest or use it for something then you can buy that something or you will be paid in return for your services. Similarly if you invest that time in you it will be like using money to make more money. So you need to be very careful with your time and don't let anyone steal it. If you don't respect your time no one will respect it. And with this, we have reached towards the end of our session and I hope that it was useful for you. When you're finished watching this video, I would like to request you that don't just feel great or happy. I want you to just invest 10 minutes and write down your tasks that you want to do today and start working on the toughest task first and then slowly moving towards the easiest one. Don't delay it. There is no reason to wait. I mean, it's just a matter of 10 minutes. The 10 minutes you take to drink a cup of coffee or chit chat with a friend or colleague or you watch some random videos on YouTube. It's not much to ask and this is for your own good. I think you're smart enough to know this. So go on and make your list and leave me a comment if you have any questions or specific problem that you're dealing with. And don't forget to subscribe for future videos and share it with your loved ones who are struggling with their time management and you would like to help them to get better. Thank you.